Hello, hello. Um, so I wanted to do a quick demo of a tool that we've built a preset to accelerate um, superset development. Um, the So I'll introduce uh, this new CLI that allows you to manage one or many superset environments very, very easily. Um, in the past, it was pretty difficult to set up a superset environment. Uh, well, not anymore. With, uh, with, with this CLI, it's very easy to manage one or many superset environments all at once uh, without them conflicting with each other. Um, this solves the problem or the challenge around working with AI where all of a sudden you can do multiple things at once, uh, but switching context or switching branches and managing multiple environments become uh, very difficult or kind of difficult, right? As you switch branches, you have to stop Docker, start Docker, do all sorts of things. So with this tool here, you can have many superset environments running all at once and AI and yourself can use a bunch of CLI commands that make it really easy to do things that otherwise would be complicated. Um, it's called Claudette because we really onboarded heavily at preset on Claude code, which is extremely powerful as I really, really accelerated the pace of development and I shifted the bottlenecks to different places. So where in the past, the bottlenecks might be on coding or the thing that we'd spend the most time doing was actual coding. Now we spend more time defining requirements, switching environments, um, you know, and, and that has become enough of a speed bump for us to go and build this thing. So today I'm going to demo this tool and what it does and uh, and what it doesn't do and how it works. It's pretty feature rich. So the video might take a moment. Um, first thing is, uh, Claudette is just a way to clone multiple, um, Git environments and manage multiple dockers and basically streamline your superset development workflow and paralyze it. Um, so I'll demo the CLI. Uh, the first thing is if you want to get started, it's as simple as, as simple as running this command. And then you'll have this Claudette. You've got to run Claudette init where it's going to set up a clone of the repo that it's going to use with Git work tree. That's a feature in Git that allows you to have uh, many clones going to manage all at once. It's effectively the same as cloning the same repo uh, multiple times, but it's all managed under the same uh, Git uh repository or git instance if you will um so yeah you can run claudette init it will set up um in your home workspace a dot claudette file where it uses some things to track um uh, keep track of state all right so now I'll pivot to um terminal so in terminal here I'm in tmux you can see I've got a bunch of things going on but we'll just work on one session now so claudette if you write claudette here um, or dash dash help, you'll see all the commands and all the things you can do. I'll walk you through some of the easiest or the, the most basic commands and give you a glimpse of what else it can do. So um, first thing to know is you don't have to type Claudette every time there's CLO. You can just type and it's a little bit easier. Um, Claude list will list my projects. You can see all the stuff I've been working on. Um, some of the projects here are active in Docker, some are not. Um, now each project's got a port associated to it. So I, when I write clo open, it will know to open the right superset environment. Uh, you can associate a PR that's just to help you keep track of things. And then um, we assume that you're working with a project.md file, which you don't necessarily have to use, but if you use it, it will take the first line and put a little description on here. So it's either running in Docker, not running in Docker, or these little ice cubes show that it's those are frozen environments. So those are ones that I wanted to reclaim the space on my hard drive. So I ran Cla uh, Claudette um, freeze. So if you do Claudette freeze, you you, uh, you deallocate maybe like three or four gigabytes of, um, of data on your hard drive. So that can be convenient if you're running out of uh, this space like I was. Um, so now looking back at the commands, so the help file. So as I said before, you have to write clo in it. Um, it's already been initialized for me, but you can see that I have here um, a dot Claudette uh, folder. Um, this is where the Git work tree is stored. There's a, a, a Claude.local.md that gets shared across all of your Git work tree. So all your projects will find the same Git ignore Claude local. It gives some information to Claude about um, 
about the fact that Claudette is installed and you can use that to add things to your Cloud Local and then all your projects will see it all at once. Your projects are start, stored here. Um, and it looks like in mine, I've got, you know, my work trees solves in place. It's not that important that you understand this. Um, the things that you gotta remember is if you wanna create a new project, you write clo, add uh, the name of the project. So here I will call this demo Claudette. And while I do this, it's gonna set up a fully working superset environment. So it's creating a work, a Git work tree now. Think of it as a Git clone that's unique to this project. It's gonna check out the branch. If you had a branch locally or remote that had that name, um, it will it will ask you whether you wanna use that branch. So if there's a branch existing you wanna work on, it's gonna pull it if you decide so. Here it's installing a virtual environment and it's gonna run npm install, which is gonna take a little while. Uh, well, I, I like to split my screen in tmux, so I know the shortcut. So here I can break my screen into different sections. So it's gonna be working on the left, um, but there's a lot I can do. So here I can activate the demo. Uh, so when you activate, it just pops a shell that's already in context. It's gonna bring you to the right folder of the, the environment variable in the right places. Um, and that allows you to just be working on that project. Um, here, npm install is hugging my terminal a little bit, but I'll, sh I'll go to a different tmux tab so you can see what's happening. So I was working on this project called drill through. Um, I was, um, you know, each project as a project that MD. Um, so it's kind of useful if you want to keep track of your project uh, that will persist what's important from the session. So that's for you to say, hey, Claude, I want you to, um, to checkpoint or to update my project.md as you start working on it. Uh, here, I'll start a fresh session. So if you write cloak co code, it will um, start a cloud session. So it's a cloud code session. Here, I'm stopping the Docker too. So I had a Docker running already, but I just want to show you some of the commands and how it all works. So here, I have a cloud, a cloud, uh, cloud sessions. If I say, um, read my project, uh, MD and standby. So here I had done, I'd work done before. Normally I would go into planning mode and um, ask it to create a project.md, but here I already have one. I started a fresh session, so I need to tell it, hey, this is the stuff we're working on. So now it knows um, what we're working on. So here you'd be prompting, doing all your work. Um, you can connect VS Code to this folder over here and do the work however you would do it normally. I wanted to show some of the commands. So you want a Docker running? You can. You could ask Claude to pop one for you, but uh, I like to manage it myself. So Claude Docker up. If you write Claude Docker build, so here it will pass the command to um, to Docker compose. So here, this is the, effectively the same as running Docker compose up, except with a project, so that it will not conflict with other projects, right? Because the goal is to have multiple Claude windows running at once, where I ask, I prompt for some things in here. I have an environment running and I can switch to a different tab. And um, from there, I'm able to um, to work in parallel on multiple things. Because let's face it, you're probably just mostly working. You're just waiting on um, AI to do the work you asked it to do. Um, so that's kind of what's happening here that enables you to do this. Um, if I write clo open, it will open the superset environment the right place. Uh, now it's still, it's still booting up here so it's not available just yet but once docker is up i'll be able to do that um, some of the other commands that are useful uh, check this out if you want to run unit tests you can write clo pi test um, test you could point to a specific file passes pass whatever thing and it's going to use the, the same environment with a control environment uh, to run your tests inside docker so kind of convenient. Still, still loading over here. So normally I would go to a different session and ask, um, get an another project running while I get this one to boot up. But you get the idea. We can go back to the window I had before, which I believe was this one. So this is the demo we're working on. It's still installing NPM. So, you know, one thing I've said that's kind of interesting is uh, this analogy that if you had a car that went at, super high speed, like a thousand miles an hour, and you add some slow speed zones, 
uh, like 20 miles per hour zones, you would spend the bulk of your time in 20 miles per hour zones. So that's, that's kind of what's happening here with working with AI. Um, you're mo moving really fast, but things that used to take a small percentage of your, like the friction that used to take, you know, 10% uh, of your time now take a longer percent of your time. So that's where it becomes valuable to invest in tooling that makes that better. Um, so here, typically, like I said before, I would activate a Claudette session. So I'll have my Claude code session working on the left side and I'll have uh, this kind of my working terminal um, in here. I would also want to activate this one. So all it's at, I have multiple terminals going. So I'll say clo activate demo Claudette. It's gonna take a session, uh, a second and here now it's activated in parallel with running my other project that we're just looking at. I can say cloud Docker up so that I'll have two Docker environments on two different projects live at the same time. Uh, going back to the drill through environment. So now it's ready. Um, the Docker is done booting up. So I can say clow open. And now I go to this fully working superset environment. Um, and you know, if I, if I was to do the same in five or six different project on my M2 Mac, I can run you know five or six without uh, running out of memory or contention. Um, so yeah, more just doing a walkthrough of some of the features here. Uh, the main feature of course is having multiple instances of superset running at the same time on your laptop without conflicting. But then all these utility commands are super useful. So add remove. So this is adding removing project. You can list your projects, see their state. You have this um, activate that kind of brings you to the right folder with a shell with the right environment variables all, all set up. Um, you can deactivate a project. If you do clause shell, you enter the main Docker. Um, so here I could run superset, superset DB help and it's connected to the right database. So it's you know running its own uh, Postgres and Docker. So so here I'm inside the image. I could introspect it. I could run commands that require being inside the environment. Um, just looking at the help again, go down the feature list. NukeDB, that's pretty useful. Sometimes uh, we used to have this problem in the past. You switch branches and your database on a different version. So here you can just write cloud NukeDB um, and it will completely reset your database starting clean. Uh, most likely you don't have that because you have one database per project, but if you were to need that, it's right here for you. Freeze is to reclaim space. Thaw is to get a project active. Um, Cloud Depths will run the dependency refresh for NPM and your virtual environment, uh, the Python virtual environment. Uh, so a ton of useful stuff. Um, Cloud Python is pretty useful. You can run unit tests without having to set up. The first time you run it, it will set up the test database um, isolated from your main database. So, um, so it's pretty convenient to have that. But um, but here I will just run out of the box inside Docker. So tons of cool stuff. Um, this might just be the beginning for it. Um, so if you have ideas, feature requests, or you just wanna try it and share some feedback, uh, please do so. Um, check it out. Like there's no way to do superset development not using this at this point. Um, if you set up your own virtual environment and um, run the npm install command yourself, you're wasting time. Like start using this and start using it multiple times all at once. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Hopefully that's helpful. Thank you.